compressor one, two, got a lot of discharge high pressures. First thing I need to check, my pump is running and I do have a pressure differential across my barrel. Okay, so here's a problem. Uh, cooling tower fan is in off. Now that, that's like somebody hit off or there maybe was a some kind of power cycle. Maybe they, because I know they have some power issues here. Let's see if we can get to where you can see that. So we are gonna go into menu. Let's see if we can check the fault logger. Uh-oh, let's see, overcurrent. So the DC over volt, under volt. So that would suggest to me some kind of power loss or surge or something from the grid, which is pretty common. Now this does not run in auto, if I remember right. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, so we're calling for 60 hertz. All right, let's go check the fan real quick before I go any further. Don't know if you can see that, but we do have water in the tower. Fan is on and ramped up. But we do have turbo cores. This is a Daikin WMC. Uh, now the challenge to this, we're not inverted. This is a good thing, because normally we would be. Okay, so before my tower cools completely down, let's go into alarms and we're gonna clear. And the reason that's a good thing is this loop has a real bad habit of getting inverted. Now we'll see what happens to the temps when the pump comes on, but in the past I've had issues where when our chill water loop gets hotter than our condenser water loop, when that happens we get into an inverted state and when we're inverted the liquid refrigerant gets trapped in the condenser and it doesn't flow to cool the inverter plate. So coming off the bottom of the condenser we come up, we go through a dryer and we go into the cooling port on the turbo core and that is what cools the motor and the inverter and electronic components. So what will end up happening is the inverter overheats because we're activating the cooling circuit, but because the condenser is colder than the evaporator, the liquid refrigerant traps there and it won't flow through like it's supposed to, allowing the system to overheat. So we have to uninvert it to then get that liquid flowing again through you know, natural dispersion. It might turn on. Now, what I'm gonna have to do I need to act quickly. All right, now that I'm logged in, I need to go over to settings and I need to go to timers and I'm going to change the start to start to the minimum of two to speed this up and they stop to start to one. So originally they were 15 and three, I'll put those back. That's gonna get me to kick on sooner. That man is running close. That loop fully inverts and gets out of control. But that compressor should be coming on any second now. Now that I've logged into the uh, tech view though, I can see a lot more detail than I was able to prior. So that's, that helps with this process. So right now, IGV is currently opening. We're gonna go into compressor detail. It's really bad for these to overheat and invert and do that. These are technically designed, if you go to Daikin class, to where they can bring themselves out of inversion, but you have to manipulate the timers in order to do it. This is not something that you would want a customer or anybody else to do themselves. You really wanna come in and, and control the environment as you do this. Another thing that really helps is turning off all of the load. So for example, all the air handlers, we're flowing water, they're picking up heat right now. That's one reason why we're warming up the way we are. So getting the load off of the air handlers makes a big difference. Now we are staging up, our IGV got up, the compressor's running. So what we're paying attention to is the inverter temp. Once that hits, I think it's 150, that's when it's going to trip out. So by watching that, that's either going to start to go up and up and up and up and up, or it's going to halt and it's going to start backing back down. How well it works is going to depend on this. Our, our entering is still warmer than our entering on the evaporator. It's going to be close. I think we might have just barely caught it though. It's like we're flatlining. We're so close on the temps that we might get just enough cooling to keep us out of a fault. The fact that we haven't already spiked up and hit anywhere near our safety, it's kind of flatlined, that's only gonna get better. So this will pull down the inverter temp to around 100, 110 maybe. We're warmer on the condenser now, so we're gonna be pushing through. If I did not go in and manipulate that timer, I would not have caught that because it would not have allowed that compressor to start for 15 minutes after the alarm being cleared and everything settling out. Given the conditions I see though, I think they may have had a power blip it caused the fan to shut down, which inevitably led to having high head pressure because the condenser water got too hot. So working with one of our new guys and kind of getting them onboarded, 
you know, this troubleshoot took about, you know, five, 10 minutes start to finish and we got everything back online and we're stabilized. So the question is, you know, what thought process that I go into to get here? When I walked in, customer said, hey, I've got water in my tower. Tower's on, but I'm, I'm throwing, showing alarms. I don't know what's going on. So I came straight in. We had the active high head pressure, which I already cleared. I came to history. That was the first thing I did. I saw the high discharge pressure alarms. Well, my very first thought, just like with like a uh, regular air conditioner is, your high pressure switch trips, is your condenser dirty, and is your condenser fan working? Are the first two things you should be looking at. Well, in this particular case, we got a condenser water pump, we have a, a cooling tower fan. I verified the pump was on, I ver and I saw the fan was not. That identified to me, okay, I've got an obvious symptom that uh, my fan's not running, which means I'm gonna be overheating, and we can see that in our trend here. We were doing over 100 degrees and entering and leaving condenser water. So that's what I needed to see to know that that was the case. So that was step one, I identified the problem. Now I'm not 100% sure yet that there's not more issues, but out of experience, those ABBs, when you power cycle them, sometimes when they trip a fault and then get power cycled, they will go back on in an off state. That's why I am nervous that that tower fan may still be having issues. So it's not rolled off the table yet because if it went into an earth fault and then shut down, that could be a fan issue. So that's, that's still to be determined. What is very likely those I had a power issue that power issue led to an overcurrent on the fan and that overcurrent to the fan caused it to go into an off state and then somewhere in between it got a power cycle so the fault was no longer logged but it needed to be put back into auto anyway that took care of the fan for now so my next critical piece was I needed to get the compressors back on. I know from experience that this loop in this building has issues with getting inverted pretty significantly. So I knew that the, the time clock was ticking and trying to, to prevent inversion. If we had been inverted, then I would have had to cycle these compressors and shut all the building air handlers down to get the loop out of inversion. And I, it's a lot of wear and tear on the compressors to do it, but they will do it. Thankfully, I was able to limit the safety timers to their minimums. I was able to bring the compressors on and just, I mean, if I if it had been another couple of minutes, it probably would not have worked. But I just barely got them on in time to pull the loop back down before we went full inverted and started causing the compressors to trip on overheating. MTT guys, y'all stay safe in the summer.